All right, man, we just finished up a series um, on Becoming. We're getting ready to launch a new one um, that's three week long. It just deals with light, life, and love. And so we're going to... Uh, we're going to look at that next week. I just want to kind of remind us of some of these truths because these are central uh, to everything that, that really is going on. And I think that the church these days, the, the American church specifically, can get so lost in the weeds, if you will. Um, and I love walking through books of the Bible. It's grown me as a man in ways I've never grown before. The past three years, 811 of those messages I've been doing every morning since covid um, has taught me things I never would have learned had I not. Uh, and I've read through them, but when you start studying through them, then there's a there's a difference. But sometimes we can we can get lost in some of that and start looking, make it about us. Like, okay, what's he wanting us to do? What's he want? And not all of it's about you, right? We, do we know that all the scriptures aren't about you? They're about him, all of them. And then it's about how he how he relates to us. And so we find ourselves in in that way. And um, and then I think the American church is sacrificed so much today by uh, creating uh, what I call a bunch of TED Talks. Uh, if you're not familiar with TED Talks, and I'm not sure how to help you, but they're motivational speeches, and they're some of the most incredible communicators on the planet that speak in that five-minute deal. But they only cut the surface. They don't really give you the bigger picture. And so what, what I have been wanting to do and learning uh, through my own personal studies is to those five areas that we looked at in the Becoming series. And I just want to remind you of them. Because this is all of our journey. Okay, So all of us, every life is a story. And you sh- I want you to know this about yourself. And I, I'm, I'm going to keep hammering this uh, until you just you know, just tell me, hey, I got it. Uh, but, and then I'm going to still do it. Uh, because I want you to understand that Acts 17, 26, that should be marked in your Bible. It, it is that God appointed the exact times and places in which we should live. So we find ourselves in a time and a place, right? Um, I wouldn't have picked anywhere in the past. I kind of like, you know, I like toilets. I like cell phones. I'm not sure there's somewhere where in the past I want to be, but God bless those people who he appointed for that. I, I like being appointed to the place in which I am. And, um, and, and once we know that, there's something that should awaken within you. You're like, well, why? Why did that need to be born May 10th, 1959? I mean, granted, I was a great Mother's Day baby for my mom, right? Uh, what a present. Uh, well, I mean, she probably would disagree, but she can't argue now so with me here, so we're good. But but, but there's a, there was a purpose. So so what is that? I mean, I need to find out. Am, am I just, am I like like Ecclesiastes? Is, is it just my lot in life? It's under the sun. It's just going to be tall and tarry, and it's going to be hard. And or, or, or is it not? Is it meant to be rich and well-lived? And is it meant to... To, to know what it is to walk before the face of God and to do to do life, to do life together. Is it is it about having a partner in life and and children and family and then collecting those together in things called uh, ecclesias and churches and, and what do we do when we get there, right? I mean, this is, because I think my very first youth group, we called it Oasis because that's what we wanted it to be, right? I just wanted to be a place where these kids, some of these kids get beat up, don't they? It, it, high school's brutal. It's just hard. I mean, all of it, junior high, all of that's hard. Growing up's hard. Living's hard. I just wanted our place to be the place where they could just get there. They could just dock their boat on that on that little uh, Bible study and group that we had. They're going to find an oasis. And, and um, so we should know that, that we are his workmanship to create it in Christ Jesus because those are the bookends. Those let me know that that uh, God has appointed me for this day, and or, or this day was appointed for me, and I was appointed for this day. Right? Th- those two things are true. I have a purpose for being here. You have a purpose for being here. Doesn't mean it's going to be some great, you know, magical thing. It just means that we have a purpose. It would be like I said last week, peeling potatoes like Brother Lawrence did, yet changing the world. It would be like Mother Teresa just taking. Uh, Calcutta and just the, the, the garbage dump of India and if you've ever seen India it feels like all of it is but she went there to the lepers and she just loved them people. And, and you just start thinking about those kind of things right the different people that, that made a mark in your life um, you know, Miss um, Doris Matthews and so many others I can think of in my own life that, that transformed my life and so I'm grateful that I lived here in this in this time and so 
I want to say all of that because this series that we just finished is that. And, and everybody, I believe that everybody needs to know this. Because most people, you know, you interact with people who don't follow Christ. They, um, they're a sad lot in a lot of ways. I mean, they, they, they have the bravado and they know how to act like they got it all together. But you get to them at the right moment. And their life is that far from cracking up, isn't it? Right? And so what do they need? They need some hope. And it's not just, you know, here's a little Bible verse. Uh, it, it ought to be a journey because this is what God's called us on to, to do. So, you know, I just want to want us to know that. And so this is what it is, right? I'm going to go quickly today because I, I just want to hit it, the high points on this. But you and me exist. We are a part of the Imago Day. That is, we're not, we're not the animals, we're not the trees, we're not any of that. Contrary to what everybody thinks today, that you can choose your gender and you can choose, you know, your, your whatever, some of, you know, feline or what. That's just, that's just, honestly, that's just silly. It's, it's people who have a mental disorder. And so, uh, God love them, but, but that's what it is. And so, no, you're none of that. You were made in the image and likeness of God. You, you can reason. You can have a, you have a will, you have a motion, you can create things out of what He has already given to us. There's something different. Even after the fall, there was something different. That was why the law, that whosoever sheds man's blood by his own blood will he shed, for he is made in the image and likeness of God. You understand that? that there's a different punishment when you take a man's life. Why? Because he's made it, he's one of his image bearers. The dirtiest, most rotten person on the planet that you know of is an image bearer covered over in all the crap that happened at the fall. Does this make sense to us? And so with that fall, we found ourselves less than we could be, yet very much powerful in every way. Which is why when man began to get together and build a tower, it's the second time God used the plurality. The first time was he said, let us make man in his own image. And when he got to there, he said, he said, let, let, let us change the situation, right? Because what was happening, he said, there's no limit to what they do. There's something brilliant about me, a woman that's not like anything else, but we're fallen. Because of that sin, and it made a separation between us, it locked out us from having a true relationship with God. So this next stage has to be the understanding, which Aiden just demonstrated greatly uh, when he's, in his just little two-minute you know, illustration. But, but he, uh, he wants us to belong. And so there is a gospel call. And that gospel call is as simple. I mean, you can find it anywhere. You can find it in John 3.16. You can find it in Ephesians uh, chapter 2. And you can find it in, in the Romans road. Tammy and I were listening to a sermon yesterday. And you can, you can find it there. In fact, I'm going to quote you that one. You can find it in the book of Acts at, 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 uh, as they're standing there in Pentecost, right? And, and they're all the same thing. But this, this says it, this is how Romans says it. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. With the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. There is that when you cry out and you, you tell God, you know you're not him and he is, and you cry out for forgiveness, you confess that he is holy, that he is God. There is a transformation that takes place in you. And I wish I had time to talk to you about the 33 things that happened to you at salvation. But we don't. But you should take a look at those. And I don't mind giving them to you. But there's 33 things. The moment you cried out to God, those things happen. He gives a little outline in Ephesians, right? You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That will never not be a part of your life ever again. It's like, it's like just the contract. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing. You get it all, Right? It's like what happens when you sit down with your mom or somebody dies and they have that inheritance. Here's what you get. That's what happened because you died. And here's what you get because you've been made alive. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You've been made at peace with God. He will never not be at peace with you. You can't do enough garbage at this point in your life to make God not be at peace with you. There's never a straw that will break his back. Those are the things that you and I have to know. These, these are truths that I don't think the churches are teaching these things today. I think they're not, they don't let people know what it means to be a Christ follower, and they don't let them know what it means to have that assurance of this. And so, we, but we look at those things, right? And, and you've been forgiven. Not, not right now, not until, up until then. Now you've got to get yourself clean. Stay clean now. That, that's not it. You, you have, you have uh, been forgiven 
forevermore. There will never be a sin that God will look at and go, mm, no, never. Literally, you could, in theory, hear him say when you confess your sins, what, what are you talking about? Because the Bible says that he forgives you and he remembers him no more, right? Casts him in the depth of the sea. See, we hear these things, but we don't let it make, make sense to us. And so, so we belong. Once we belong, it's a game changer. Now we're in a position, this is why he made us, right? So it starts with, with hey, I have a reason for you to be born here, but I need, I need for you to understand the gospel. Because I was just this earthen vessel. I was slop jar. We talked about it, right? But he wanted to make me useful to him. And so the only way to do that was for him to cleanse me, and he did. And I'll never be the same. And so now my job isn't to behave. It's not, it's not just to let me just behave. I'm trying to. I can, it's the hardest thing for me to do is behave. I promise you, you can follow me around. It's just hard, hard. You can ask my guys at work. I had, I had to confess to this. I'm sorry. I have the gift of sarcasm, and it comes out more times than I want. You know, they're they're laughing, but they they feel it. You know, and uh, and so it's just kind of is what it is in that sense. But uh, but he didn't call me to to behave. He called me to become something. Right. We remember that. Corinthians, behold, all things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I'm not a better version of myself. I'm radically different than I, will, I would have ever been had I made it. I was at nine years old when I came to Christ. I don't know what would be this old 65, 40-year-old man would look like without Christ having spent those many years with him. And I don't want to find out. Because I don't, the version that's right here is not, not the greatest version in the world, but it's better than what it would have been. And he, I am becoming something, just like you're becoming something, right? This is this is what he's calling us to do. So what do we do? What do we do? We put, we look like Jesus. It's what John says. If you claim to be in Him, you got to live like He did. That means there's certain things I got to quit doing, and certain things you got to start doing, right? That's the whole Ephesians four. I, I know. I hope you're not tired of this because, again, I'm going to keep saying. Um, and then once once we begin to where we begin to live like Jesus. And people begin to see that there's something different about this person. And I would tell you this, there are four attitudes, and, and I'm, I'm, this is all free too. I'm, it's not a part of the notes here. No, none of this is, I don't think. But anyway, um, there are four attitudes that you and I could work on. It's a game changer. Humility, gentleness, patience, and forbearance. You want to know what Jesus looks like? That's what he looked like. Just chase, chase every story. I dare you. Chase every story through the Scriptures and tell me you don't see those attitudes at every turn. And you will always see those at every turn. You will never not see one of those at every turn. Just go chase it. I've, I've been doing it. You can't find it. He's humble. He's gentle. He's patient. And he's forbearing. Did, didn't, didn't he treat Judas the most despicable uh, of his apostles and say, friend, go do what you must? Do you think he was teasing about that? you think he was lying about that? Or do you think he saw him as a friend? Creepy scary, right? When you see that this is what it means to look like him. And so, so, but this is where we're going. And then what we do when we begin to get those things together, and it doesn't, listen, some of you got here a lot faster than the rest of us. I mean, I've seen guys who, who get saved and, and like it felt like two days later, they look just like Jesus. Right? I mean, they just, they just act like him. I wish mine was like that. I'm, I'm on the short bus, so it took me a little longer to get here. But, but I'm still trying to get there. And so then God wants to take our personality and the supernatural gift that we have to make an incredible difference on this planet while we're here. If you don't know that about your life, you're just settling. You're just going, sitting and kind of getting a little a little high, right? I mean, I, I got a guy at work, he always tells me he's going to go burn a square. I didn't know what, a, I, I had to say, what, what does that mean? It means smoke, but I didn't know what he was. He'd get frustrated, I'm going to go burn a square. I'm like, okay. So he comes back, he goes, hey, you feel better? Well, not really, but, you know, it was a break. And, and, and I think that that's, that's, that's how some people see church, right? It's just going, just here and, and, uh, oh, that was fun. I liked that. I didn't like that. I think preach preached preach too long, yelled too loud, the music was too loud, or, you know, whatever we do. You missed everything, if that's how you see it. Right. That's one of the things I love about what we're doing here, because it's small. Anyway, now, next week, we're going to look at light, life, and love. And these are the three things that happened that we got back when we belonged. We were people walking in darkness, until we saw the great light, right? And so then he, the light is truth, and so he gave that to us. And then he gave us life abundantly. We were dead. He gave us life. And I want to, I want, these are tools that we use to reach the world. Light, which is truth. Uh, life, which is a life that looks like Jesus, that's abundant. And then love, 
which is radical as can be. So he taught us how to love, and it's transforming everything about who we are. And so we're, but we're going to look at that. We're going to look at all three next week, and then we're going to start looking at the Advent. I can't wait. So we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a great great end end of the season. What I want to do in the interim of this is tell you what God's been doing in my own life, and tell you what what Tammy and I are the road that we're heading down. So we're starting a new ministry, and has and this this changes this nothing. Just so you're clear. But um, and, and the whole day wouldn't let me explain to you why we are, but we're doing a Sunday night gathering um, in a building in the center of town that we're waiting on God to give to us because there's so many people that need exactly what we're telling you, and um, I have to do this. I was telling Tammy the other day, I said, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. My, Abby said, Dad, I, it's so exciting to hear you at this age still having dreams. I'm like, I'm not sure it's a dream. I will find out. It's just a compulsion. I have to do this. I told her I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to stand at the Red Sea and the Lord's going to part it or he's not, but I have to do that. And so I'm just letting you know because you're my friends and because I love you. And I just want you to hear, though, because I would love for you to be a part of it. I know Sunday morning may be already too much, but if you want to, you know, kind of do some Sunday night stuff, you got some time on your hands, uh, then, you know, come come join us. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here on Sunday mornings just like we, we always have. So um, we're going to be starting that. Uh, in, in January, somewhere middle January, um, and so this week I'm going to start announcing some things to some people to let them know, hey, there's something coming. Uh, we're going to do some Envision gathering nights where I can share with people. Um, I have been inundated with people who want exactly what I'm telling you, uh, and so have a lot of my friends and stuff, and so uh, why, why are we doing this, right? I mean, I can give you the what. What? We're going to start a, a gathering. It's called Simple Gatherings, Simply Church. Experience the freshness of an ancient faith. And I can't wait, because what I see in my head uh, looks a lot like this, only only well, like with places where, because it's a, the hardest thing to do is walk through that door, right? A house church, that's the hardest thing to do. The second hardest thing to do is walk through a little bitty door that looks like maybe there could be nothing but old folk in there, and somebody's yelling, and somebody's dancing, and somebody's doing what else, right? And so we're, we're just afraid of things. And so I just want to create a, a safe space for people to come and hear truth. This is what we're doing. It is that rescue shop right near the gates of hell. So this is what, this is what I'm doing. And I cannot not do it um, And because uh, God knows I've tried to talk him out of it. Um, so it's just in me. My daily dose has been one of those things that God's been doing to bring me to this place. It's how we've been doing this for three years now. You realize that? Three years last week, we've been doing a house service. God bless you that we'd still stay along because this is weird. I mean, if you don't, you know, it's but but I love it and I'm grateful. And so this doing this is like listen. I pastor large churches, medium sized churches, huge youth groups. The youth group was incredible. This though is like there's just something different about this, and so I, I, just, I that that's a part of it. My work life and everything that's changed recently has done that. Um, God has given me an ability to see people that are hurting and broken and lost and messed up. And it seemed like everywhere I go, I find that. Uh, yesterday, I got out of the car at Jared and Courtney's house, and Jared was in a conversation with a neighbor, and I just kind of, because I don't know how not to, you know, <laughs> invade, I just walked over and saying, hey, and it turned into a conversation that got deeper than I've been in a long time with anybody. This man just watched his wife go through uh, cancer and survive it and this man has had a past that would uh, deserve in his mind to, to be living by himself and yet I spoke just a few words to him truth kind of like what we're talking about here on the way back yesterday my son texted me a note and said dad I don't know whatever you said to that man but he said he's a different man today because of that now that's because that's because of truth that has nothing to do with anything else just because someone was bold enough to go look this is this is you want let's peel back the layer and tell you what it is this is this is truth and the world has a void in the depth of truth, and nobody's teaching it, and everybody's going along with it. And I feel like I'm living in that episode of the Emperor's New Clothes. Like, does nobody going to tell him he's naked, or are we just going to pretend like we're so... I can't do that. And it's in the political statement. It's a spiritual statement as well. I just can't. And so um, it's because of that. It's because of... Um, I'm going to be going part-time in January, I think. I, apparently I did well enough that we, I can go back to that. I don't know. Uh so we're moving into a cultural thing. We're starting what we call Tracery U. I have more time on my hands. So 
I, I don't know what to do with time on my hands except do something with it. And so that's what we're doing. And so it's part of that, part of the pastor's prayer meetings. Uh, I, I pastor the smallest church in every arena <laughs> that I'm in with pastors. And yet I've had three the past years speak into my life and say, God's saying that there's a lot more for you than that, that this is just kind of the, the, the training ground for being able to do some other things. God wants to teach you some things here that matter. And they're all honored and are, are honor or are, are speak well of this church and what we do. And they all, and I tell them, I tell them everything about it. And so I've just had so many of them speak into my life. And so it's just, that's just where we're going. So you say, why another church? Because the world's changing. Um, and the church is ineffective. The American church is ineffective. And I'm going to tell you why real quick. I know you probably don't want to hear this and we're going to be, oh, I'm still early though. Um, so, uh, and I, I've, I've already shared this with you, I think, once before, but I'm just going to do it because redundancy is the way to make things make sense, right? But you take the average person that's my age or younger, and they grew up hearing about evolution. They grew up hearing about all of these worldview things, right? Uh, all, that, that, uh, not just evolution, but, but um, agnosticism and all of that. We went through all of that. You look at TV and the, the worldview that's being displayed on there is nothing to do with what God has to say pull up Netflix and see all of those things, then it's everywhere. So the, the church has thought that they would make it fun for the world to come in and be wowed with sensory experiences and emotionalism. And so there would be some great music. And it's great music. I'm not downing that. It's just, and it's great. And, and it's carefully crafted sermons. And it's all of those things. And then at the end of it, somebody's going to play a keyboard really slowly. And the pastor's going to start whispering or yelling, depending on, I guess, his mood. And he's going to try and get you to come down to an altar. And you're going to have some emotional experience down there. But it was not a genuine thing because there's a principle. You don't emote your way to truth. You truth your way to emotion. Does that make sense to you? We, we don't, we don't, emotion will never get us to truth. But truth will always get us to emotion, right? I mean, this is the way it is. And so, so the, the, the church in its well-meaning attempt to be relevant has done two things. Didn't speak truth. So the believers are still babies in church. I hear so many people going to church forever, and they don't. They couldn't argue their way out of a paper bag when it comes to theology. They don't. They couldn't tell you whether they say. You start pressing them. Are you sure? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying. I, I, well, I'm trying to be. And once you start saying I'm trying, you don't even understand the gospel at that point. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So this this is what's going on. So we have churches in America filled with people who think they're saying, and maybe they are, maybe they're not. It's not my judge. But they're certainly not hearing the gospel to ensure that they are. And then you've got a bunch of unbelievers that came in, and they've enjoyed the show, but it didn't change their life because we didn't speak the hard truths to them. We didn't let them know that, no, your problem. See, you don't start with the solution. This is what the American gospel does. Start with the solution. Add Jesus to your mix. It starts with the situation. You're a dirty, how many of you heard me say that at, at New Covenant from then? You're a dirty, rotten, stinking little sinner. That's who you are. That's who you are. And until you cry out for help, that's who you're always going to be. And the only one that can help you is not you or, or psychology or your, you know, your uh, uh, friends or any, any, pick any of that. No, none of that. Boundaries, none of that. Your medication, none of that's going to fix you. The only thing that's going to fix you is truth. And so this is why we're going to be doing what, what we're doing. So how? I mean, we'll be done by 1130. How? We're going to be, which is what I am anyway, raw, real, and relational. That's, that, that's what's missing in church. I was telling somebody the other day, said I can't even, I was talking to a guy Friday night at a party outside. He said, I, I, I'm hungry. He's like a 28, 30 year old kid. I hunger for somebody to disciple me. I can't even get my pastors to take notice of me. He said, I've asked and asked. And he said, you, know, you want to throw me in some group, but that group's not anything that's going to help me learn what it means to be a Christ follower. And so I'm just telling you, I, I, everywhere I go, I get these conversations. Like, like, it's just the Lord telling me these things. So we're doing simple gatherings, truth and love. Every life's a story, every story's a journey. Every journey ends in a destination. By God's grace, I'm going to disrupt every journey that's on the way to hell. It's going to do Because I'm going to speak truth. Because that's the only thing I know. And that's the only thing that's going to change things. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we have to get comfortable talking about hard truth in a loving way to people. But we don't, Right? Uh, those of us who think we're the boldest, we're as bold as lions. We get in a situation, all of a sudden we got kind of cowered down because we're 
there's just something in us that doesn't want to be unliked. Rather that we be someone seen as, I don't want to be unloving. I don't. I wish wish you would like me. I like to be liked, but but I'm gonna love you, and, I'm gonna, and that means I'm gonna tell you truth. I'm gonna do it lovingly. I'm gonna tell you truth. Right. So this is who this uh, this is us, not me. I don't I don't want you here like this. You're in the boat with me. I'm just saying. So we're gonna have several different kind of groups. We're gonna have a large gathering that will meet at 5:45. Um, right now, one of the uh, construction guys in town is offering me his building. It's a little far from here, um, so I don't want to do it. But I may do an envision gathering, but it's over there by the colonnade. We said you can have it if you want it on Sunday nights. So I will find a spot Sunday night. Kind of want to, kind of want to find it somewhere in the um, Irondale area. I, I checked every one of your address to see where was it like the most middle, and Irondale is the most middle, right? Um, so of everybody, because I got friends that live way down 280 also, and I've got you guys, and I've got guys in Gardendale, and you guys up where where you are. So. We just just check it out like that. So we're gonna we're gonna do some acoustic music. I'm gonna have people like Jenny and others, the, the you know, blonde chick, and and just random. It'll it won't because it's not gonna be about the stage and a bunch of people. It's just gonna be about us singing raw, real songs to Jesus and to each other because that's what He's called us to. We're gonna read scripture out loud together, like somebody's gonna read the scriptures. I want, uh, every week I appreciate so much when Tammy does that here. Um, I want you to hear some testimonies. I think it's important that we hear that, that God is doing stuff in people's lives. Um, we're going to speak truth. We're going to have stations, which we used to have when we were meeting in every church we had, where you could go light a candle if you wanted to. You could have communion if you wanted to. You could go get prayed over if you wanted to. You could go pray by yourself if you wanted to, right? And and so we're going to do those things. Then we're going to do a launch gathering. Everybody's going to go to a launch gathering if you want to get into the rest of the church life. And it's those eight things. It's the five beholds and three L's. And then you're going to craft your story. Because I want to know where you are spiritually. Because depending on where you are spiritually, depends on where these other gatherings are. So I'll tell you what the other gatherings are, and then I think we can probably be done. But there's what I'm going to call light gatherings. We're, it'll be heavy on teaching, but it'll be, think master class. If you want to know about the end times and you want to know what's going on, there's going to be a class there for you because you should know that. And I probably don't take the position that most of you do, but I'm just saying you should know at least what you believe about the end times. And you should know what you believe about family and what does it mean to be a man and a woman and, and, and what is it what are the roles there and what does it look like because the world has messed those things up and hodgepodge them together. And what does it mean to be a parent and to be a dad? Most dads don't know that throughout the scriptures it is our job to train our children, not our wives. We just delegated that. But it never said that. Women nurture, men train. Go check it out. It's truth. Who's preaching that to us? Nobody. We just we just acquiesce to what's easy, what's comfortable. <clears throat> There's gonna be light gatherings. There's gonna be life gatherings. This is what I like. Because if you go to most church, you want to sign up for you got to sign up for a group, and they're gonna let's be there for twelve weeks. You're just gonna get to know everybody. They're gonna say, oh, we're gonna break up and divide. You know, everybody's like, no, I like the group I'm with. Or you go to a group, and it's like, you know, we we do uh, you know golf, and that's about it. Um, we don't we don't lack for. Uh, much of that stuff. What what we do need is a group of people in your choosing that kind of pops up organically that says, hey, can we just walk together and agree that we'll meet every once a meet week, once a month, and we're going to just go through the one another's and just try to, what does it mean to love each other, to forgive each other, to be hospitable toward one another? And we begin to look what it looks like to be a family. I don't care how long you meet, how often you meet, it doesn't matter. I mean, let's just do that because that's the body of Christ. This is, this, this is how it's meant to be lived, right? Pedestrian. That's how I used to phrase it when I was trying to get this happening. A few years ago, to hit a brick wall, uh, and then um, and then we're gonna have love gatherings. That's where right now you go to church and they take you through the growth class. They say, "Hey, now we want to find your purpose. Your purpose is either you're gonna hand out a connect card in the mornings and welcome everybody. You're gonna attend the parking lot. You could be on the praise team if you sing well enough and look pretty enough." I'm there, that sarcasm again. Sorry, uh, but 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 that but that's what happens. But what if none of those is your purpose? What, what if your purpose is something completely different? What if your purpose is you just want to reach your neighborhood, right? Where, where's that in the church deal? It's not because it doesn't, it doesn't help them build their kingdom, if you give me the ability to say that, right? I don't, I don't care about a kingdom. Uh, I don't. Uh, I just want to see God glorified. And so I want there to be love gatherings. And I think, man, if, if you decide you want to do something, I want to say, hey, church, that's what they want to do. And you guys feel the same thing? Can we partner with you all? 
and, and see to it that it happens, right? I think some crazy good stuff's going to come out when you let people led by the Spirit, not by some good-looking pastor guy. Not that y'all have one, but you know, they all seem to be that way. Um, and not, not that, right? And so this is where we're going. So we're doing it on Sundays. 5.45, doors open, 6 o'clock, we start doing what we do. Um, ultimately, Irondale. Now, to tell you who, I've got some friends that are doing this with me. Uh, Rhonda and Trevor. Um, uh, I had the privilege of watching them grow spiritually in, in the church. I, I married them in my backyard. Uh, we worked together at Tracery Stone, and then we went to Highland College, and was, he was a campus pastor in Texas. Uh, he grew two campuses to like 2,500 people. Not, not that I care about that number, but I care about somebody who knows systems and knows how to organize something like that because I, I stink at that stuff. And he's like, look, I, I, I want to do this. He said, I think this is why God's brought me back here to Birmingham. And he said, and I've got others that want to come from Texas to here to help us do this work. And he said, I just want you to do what you do. I just want you to teach, and I want to help build something that, that will last for, for, the, for the kingdom's sake. And so I appreciate him. McKinley, who is his... Uh, a stepdaughter, one of the sweetest girls I ever knew. Her and Jackie Lee used to hang out together. We'd travel together and do all those things. She's married, and her husband Elijah is one of my frontline managers. He is the sweetest soul there ever was, and um, and he's hungry. He's on a he's on a cruise on his honeymoon, and he's asking me biblical questions whenever he got a signal about just how do you do that and what do you do here, and and so they say, hey, we 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 want to be a part of that, um, and so I'm hoping all of you will. Um, Andy and Beth Jenkins, he's helping me with my website. Uh, to get things up and running and, and working on a lot of that and just helping me strategize through some things. Andy's been a pastor for most of his life and now uh, just in marketing. But anyway, I'm going to be done. I can't be two minutes longer than I said I was. But uh, I just want I, I have to share that with you. And so if you've got any questions, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good to answer anything. Uh, but I want you guys involved to the degree that you can. Um, and so if you want to, man, let me know. Because I think it's going to be a wild ride. So we'll see. I'm going to the Red Sea. If it parts, I'll let you know. But when it does, hang on, right? Because I think some good stuff's coming. Let me pray for us, and then Mike, we're going to do some... Uh, hey, we can probably pass that out while I got this song, if you want. And uh, yeah, let me do that. Father, thank you for this day, for life, for just the opportunity to share truth, to share a heart that you've given to me of what I, I, I think that you're calling us to do. And so, Father, would you pray for us? And, I mean, meet our needs as we pray to you. And that you would uh, you you would meet our needs there. So Father, open doors because if you don't, then it's a waste of time. And so we just press and we wait. Thank you for the opportunity to hang out with these good folks today and just enjoy meal and just share life. Uh, in Christ's name, we pray. Amen.